Hey everyone, this is FaZe and welcome to my channel. If you've been subscribed to my channel for a while, then you probably know how big of a fan I am of the iPad. I use the M4 iPad Pro 13 inch as my main computer, and I use the new seventh generation iPad mini as my main content consumption device. And in today's video, I wanna go over some best tips and tricks that you may know of and also may not know of where you can literally conquer iPadOS and take it next level when it comes to productivity. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about exactly that. I love using the iPad to take notes. This is the perfect note-taking device. And there are some instances where I quickly need to jot down some notes. And by using quick notes, you can do just that over any app or screen on the iPad. Not just notes, but even links and graphics and other images can also be added as a quick note. And there are two ways to make a quick note. The first is from any app, tap the share icon and then add to quick note. The second way to do it, and perhaps my favorite way, is to swipe up from the bottom right corner. You can also do this gesture with your finger or your Apple Pencil. All you have to do is just go to settings and then go to multitasking and gestures, then turn on swipe finger from corner. This is incredible. I mean, you don't always have to be searching for your notes application to take notes, right? There's a lot of times where someone's like, hey, you know, quickly jot down this phone number. And I just, you know, swipe from my screen and I'm writing it down, right? That's really, really cool. You don't have to be looking for your notes app all the time. It comes really, really handy. Now, speaking of gestures and stuff, let's talk about taking screenshots on the iPad. And I know that sounds very basic. And we all know that if you hold on to your power button and your volume button together, it takes a screenshot, right? But there's a better and perhaps more intuitive way that I'm about to show you guys. What you wanna do is take your iPad and swipe up from the bottom left side corner of your screen and voila, you've taken a screenshot. But it's better because you can make edits right from this screen, right? You can see I have all my pens and my all my tools and colors and I can add stickers and text boxes and stuff like that or shapes. I immediately can get the full page or the screen and start making edits right from that gesture alone. So that's really helpful. Next up, quick conversion tool. There are many times when I wanna do a simple lookup of money conversion, weight, or a simple math calculation, and I don't want to download a separate app or keep going to Safari to look things up. The quick conversion tool is amazing because it's built directly to the OS. So when you swipe down, you get the search bar, and in the search bar, do any simple lookup or calculation and you'll get the answer right away. Now let's talk about the keyboard. If you've used a thumb only typing experience on your iPhone, you can split the iPad keyboard in half to replicate that experience. I must say that it doesn't necessarily work on all iPads, especially the larger iPads, but for the iPad mini, I love this feature. When the keyboard is open at the bottom of your screen, long press the keyboard key at the bottom right, Menu options include undock, floating, so you get a mini iPhone size keyboard that you can put anywhere on the screen, and split. To undo your selection, long press again and tap merge. However, like I said, the larger iPads don't have a split keyboard option, but you do get the option for a floating keyboard that does come to use much more than I had initially thought. Also on any of these keyboards, you can still hold down a finger on the space bar to turn the whole keyboard onto a trackpad and place a cursor anywhere for typing. Now, speaking of keyboards, you know, with the 13 inch iPad Air and the iPad Pro, uh, you get numbers and punctuation and symbols on the virtual keyboard. With the smaller iPads, you don't necessarily get that. However, with a simple swipe, you can access all of that. Notice that each letter on the iPadOS keyboard also has a corresponding gray symbol over the letter. Just swipe down quickly on the individual key. For example, tap the W key to get a W, but if you swipe down on it, you get the number two. So as you can see, there's punctuation and symbols all across the keyboard itself over the, the main key, right? If you just swipe down like I just showed you, you can easily get that punctuation number or symbol. It's very neat, very simple, and very handy. Next up, let's talk about Control Center. Now, Control Center is really powerful. You just swipe from the top right-hand side corner and you get all your controls. And with iPadOS 18, you can customize them more than ever before, right? Now, a lot of times what happens is when people buy an iPad for the very first time, you know, you get custom controls in the Control Center that are kind of preset right there for you, right? When my brother got an iPad, he was like, how do I, you know, do screen recording very easily or quickly, right? And so I said, oh yeah, just go into Control Center. There should be an icon there for you to, you know, screen record. And he said, there isn't. You know, you have to add custom controls to make it powerful. So the way that you can do that is when you're in the Control Center, just hold on to the screen and you can, you know, customize the controls so you can make them bigger or you can, uh, 
add a control. So you just click on add a control. And as you can see, you get a ton of different controls. And now Apple is even working with third parties now to, to give you cu custom controls. You can get the voice memo shortcut so you can immediately start a voice memo right from the control center. And like I said, even that recording, the screen recording feature right here, as you can see. So it's really, really cool how you can have so many shortcuts and quick controls right on the control center. And so I suggest that you go into your control center and start adding controls that are going to be easy and useful for you guys. The next tip is sharing your Safari tabs across all devices. So another way of sharing access across devices is to have the tabs that are open in the Safari browser, say on your iPhone, to also appear on your iPad as well. You do this via iCloud tabs. On the iPad or the iPhone, you just go to settings, find your name, click iCloud and ensure that Safari is switched on. So when you go to Safari on the iPad and, and tap the tabs button on the left navigation, you'll see an entry for iCloud tabs. Tap to see the list of tabs open on your other devices. Next, let's talk about multitasking. And if you are someone like me who uses the iPad as your main computer, then this is something that is super duper important for you to hear. You can have slide over where one app sits on top of another or a split view where two apps are side by side, making it easy to copy data back and forth between them. This is extremely helpful when I'm taking notes on one side and have Safari on the other side. And what's even cool is that I can drag and drop things from one screen to another. This allows me to be very productive and you can technically have even more apps open all on the same screen if you use something like Stage Manager, which gives you a very Mac-like experience where you can have multiple desktops and each desktop has apps grouped together and you can rearrange them to whichever way you want. Next up, using the iPad as a secondary display. And a lot of people don't necessarily know that you can use the iPad like that, right? And if I have a Mac, I can easily just use this as an extended monitor. It's super duper cool and it kind of increases your productivity regardless of which device you're in, right? It comes very handy and super easy to do as well. And the best part is, is that the built-in trackpad and the keyboard of your Mac will immediately work with the iPad itself. So I can be using the cursor on my MacBook and the moment I shift over to the iPad display, that cursor is still working. Or if I'm writing notes on the iPad screen, I can be doing that from the Mac's keyboard, right? So that's really, really neat. So when you get your iPad for the very first time and you hold it in your hands, it's hard not to fall in love with it, right? And a lot of people for a lot of years were saying that iPads were not very customizable, but I think over the past few years, that's kind of changed a bit, right? And this is probably one of the easiest ways to personalize your iPad and kind of make it your own and add certain things that are beneficial for you. And let's just start with the lock screen first. You can alter the font, the wallpaper, and even add a few widgets to keep important information available at a glance. Personally, I have the default font set with a weather widget, calendar widget, my to-do list, along with the widget showing the book that I'm currently reading. And I love how I can instantly get all this information without even entering my home screen because I really like how all this information is right there on the log screen that I can also enter into the app of right by tapping into it. This is how you do it. Wake up your iPad, unlock it, then press and hold on the log screen. Tap the customize button and begin tweaking the log screen to your liking. So that is the log screen. Now let's talk about the second thing that you can customize and that's the home screen. You get all your apps and widgets right there. Now, if you drag an icon to an empty part of the screen, the app will stay in that part of the grid instead of snapping to its usual place. This change also applies to widgets, which can be placed anywhere within the grid. Personally, I don't really like this feature, but I think those individuals who want a little bit more freedom in the way they want to arrange their widgets and icons, this will be great for them. But that's not the only way you can customize your home screen. You can also customize the look and feel of the icons themselves. So a long press of the background followed by a tap of the top left edit button brings up a new customized button. Selecting it brings up a new pop-up section specifically affecting icons. For a start, the small to large toggle will change the size of the icons in the grid. The size change makes them easier to see and to press as well as filling up more of the screen itself. However, be aware that using large icons with this toggle removes the visible names of the icons. On my 13 inch iPad Pro, I keep the standard size of icons. However, with my iPad mini, due to it being a smaller screen, I prefer larger icons with no names underneath as I like the cleaner look and feel for that device. 
Below that are options that affect the appearance of Apple produced app icons. Normally apps are classed as being in light mode for their typical appearance. Dark mode, however, gives it a darker look and feel, such as inverting colors and using more of the black paint than anything else. The last icon option is tinted. This acts in a similar way to dark mode options, but with the exception of black and white, all other colors are changed to just one. The idea of this feature is that users can select what the color is. This allows for the icons to match the background for a more cohesive design or to be any color of the user's preference. And once again, if you want to be really productive, I think all the things that I went over is going to be very beneficial for you. But at the end of the day, there are so many cool things when it comes to the iPad, right? These are just my favorite tips and tricks that I wanted to share with you guys. I'm sure there's a lot more that you might even know of, right? So in the comments section below, let me know what tips and tricks do you have that helps you be more productive and efficient when it comes to getting work done on the iPad. So whatever thoughts you have, whatever comments you have, whatever questions you have, leave them down in the comments section below. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you next time.